Okay, today we're looking at the topic of vectors and kinematics. Now, if you remember from previously, kinematics links to motion, so it links to the displacement, the velocity, and the acceleration. Now, for today's video, we're going to be looking at vectors with constant acceleration, which refers to our SUVA content, which we've covered previously. And that's the purpose of this video, bringing together vectors with SUVA. Now, some of you may have been looking in your textbooks and you may have come across your key formulae. Now, there are two key formulae in the textbook generally, which are, now I've written a lot of them here, but R equals UT plus a half AT squared and R equals R naught plus VT. When we look at this, r equals ut plus a half at squared refers to a constant acceleration and an initial velocity, and r equals r naught plus vt refers to constant velocity, so the acceleration is equal to zero, which is the same as these two formulas, just with no acceleration. Now you'll see here that we have this value of r zero, and this value of r, we used to sue that. This is now becoming RUVA. So what does this R represent? Well, R in vectors is the position in space. For example, the origin of a particle is zero, zero. If I'm at a position of minus one, five, I'm one to the left and five up, which funny enough is the position for this particle in this example here we have here a particle p passing through point f when t is zero so point f when t is equal to zero and it has velocity 6i plus 2j now if that was the velocity when t is equal to zero that would be our initial velocity and it accelerates constantly so we said constant acceleration of minus i and minus j referring to SUVA, so this is our acceleration. And it says if point F has position vector minus I plus 5J relative to fixed origin, find the position vector of P when T is equal to four. So what this is saying here is that point F is at minus I plus 5J. That's the starting point of our particle P. Now to approach any question in vectors, it's always important to draw a diagram so we can see what is actually happening in this case. And that's exactly what I've done over here. If we look at this scenario over here, here is our little diagram. We have our particle over here at minus i plus 5j. It had an initial velocity of 6i plus 2j. Now, I've written this in column form because I think it's a little bit easier to follow. So it's 6 and 2. And it has an acceleration of minus i minus j. So minus 1 and minus 1. Now, what that means, that acceleration of minus 1 minus 1, it means that every second, this velocity is going to decrease by 1 and by 1. So when t is 0, the velocity is 6, 2. When t is 1, this decreases by 1, and this decreases by 1. So this would be 5, 1. When t is equal to 2, this would be 6, minus 1, minus 1 again, 2, minus 1, minus 1 again. So that would be 4, 0. It means that the direction of this is going to change. Originally, it's like that, 6 and 2. It would then become 5, 1, 4, 0, 3, minus 1. So every second, the velocity of this particle is going to change. Now we've said this is a RUVAC question. We're trying to find the position vector of P when T is equal to four, which we can see over here when T is four. So we're going to be using here our formula for R equals UT plus a half AT squared. Now normally we'd be using S for the displacement, is u t plus a half a t squared and we'd say okay so we're trying to find out this position 
the initial velocity is six and two. The time is when t is four plus a half times by minus one and minus one times by four squared. And if we simplify that down, we end up with four times six is 24. Four times two is eight. Four squared is 16. Divided by two or half of that is eight. And then multiplying that by the minus one, the minus one gives you minus eight and minus eight, which means that that has given us a value of 16 and zero. So that means that after four seconds, this has traveled 16 to the right and zero down. But the position vector where it finishes isn't 16, zero. This is a very, very common mistake. What this is is 16, zero from its initial position. So if it started here at minus one, five, it's now gone 16 to the right over to here. And now you'll notice that I've left a blank in every single line over here. I've left this gap. And what this is, is a combination of those two formulae, which we first started with. R is our position vector. But the position vector of your location in space at the end depends on your initial position. It's all linked to the initial position. The initial position in this question was, we can see in our question, minus one, five, minus one and five. So for this, I've had to go from here and add on minus one, five at each point. And that would have given us a value overall equal to 15, zero. Sorry, 15, not zero, 15, five. That is the final position which we end up with. And this comes down to the fact that this is the formula that I use for these questions. I don't use R equals UT plus a half AT squared. I link in together our two formulae from the beginning, which were R equals R naught plus VT, because everything is in relation to this original position. So this would have become R naught plus UT plus a half AT squared, R naught plus VT minus a half AT squared, R equals R naught plus a half U plus V times by T. So everything in terms of the final position depends on the initial position plus the displacement that you get from these locations. And that is how we work out a general position for our vector questions. And that's part A done. Part B, however, is a little bit different. Now, it's asking for the time when the velocity, so the time when the velocity is parallel to i plus 3j. Now, if you are parallel to something, it means you're moving in the same direction. It means your vector is some form of multiple. So if I've got i plus 3j, that's a vector of 1, 3. That means I could have a vector of 2 and 6. I could have a vector of 10 and 30. It's just some sort of multiple. I could even have a vector of minus 1 and minus 3. These are all different multiples of the velocity. But the problem is we don't know which of these values is correct. So if you're parallel, you must have a scale factor. Now we know for this case, t is no longer four. So I'm gonna turn this over for our second example. We know that we are trying to find the time when the velocity is parallel to i plus three j. So we're trying to work out the value of t and we are trying to work out a vector parallel to i plus three j. So I'm gonna put this as one, three, but multiplied by some scale factor k which is equal to k and 3k. 
So it doesn't actually matter that I've used K. I could have used a different letter. I could use X or Y or some other letter. It really does not matter. But we do the same thing. We're going to be doing SUVA here. Now we've got V, U, A, and T. So we can use V equals U plus A, T. But we've also got two unknowns here. If we have two unknowns, we are simply going to be making simultaneous equations. So if we come down to this, we have V is equal to U plus A, T. V is K and 3K is equal to U, which is 6 and 2. A, which is minus 1 and minus 1. And this is T. Now, what we've got here are I vectors along the top and J vectors along the bottom. With vectors, the I vectors only affect the I vectors and the J vectors only affect the J vectors. So I can create an equation here from each line. I could say K is equal to six minus T. And I could say three K is equal to two minus T. If I now subtract those two equations, our minus t's are going to cancel out. So this is a simultaneous equation, and I'm going to subtract. When I subtract k minus 3k is minus 2k. 6 minus 2 is 4. Therefore, k is equal to minus 2. That means, technically, our velocity would have been, if we had worked this out, k is minus 2, minus 2, and minus 6. That is definitely a multiple of 1, 3. It's 1, 3 times by minus 2. But because it's a simultaneous equation, to work out the value of t, we simply substitute back in. If we substitute back in, I'm going to substitute back into this equation here, we can say that minus 2 is equal to 6 minus t. Therefore, t bring that to that side, is equal to 8 seconds. Let's check in the other one. 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. 2 minus 8 is minus 6. Both equations work. We have our value here, 40. I hope that's made sense. If it hasn't, please comment below or feel free to let me know. Thank you.